Okay, that's Elon Musk's version of the Soul Train. Just want to go over some Tesla news with the earnings call coming up on the 25th. This is um, a recent piece from Forbes talking about why Tesla's market share is set to plunge in 2023. I um, I have a different opinion on this, but let's just get a sampling of the uh, ongoing uh, commentary on the stock price of Tesla. And again, here's a second comment. Uh, these are all recent articles. You guys can look these up via Google. Uh, Tesla still holds impressive 18% market share, uh, market share global EV sales. But that's about to change. Um, I don't really agree with this. All. However, I will state for the record right now that I think the number two battery electric vehicle manufacturer globally is going to be the Foxconn Lordstown MIH conglomerate. And I think that they are going to be second to Tesla. And the chairman of Foxconn said he hopes to build Teslas uh, for Elon Musk one day. And there's an outside chance that could happen with the lowest uh, cost uh, Tesla, the 25000 or $20,000 model. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's, let's move on to... Uh, the next clip here, you know, with the recent price cuts in uh, on the Teslas, we may be nearing the uh, 25% level. Now, this next piece here is uh, another piece about um, a, a game which I played in school. And uh, this is a market simulation game. Uh, played uh, to simulate market conditions and um, as you can see there there's a kind of a matrix of companies you're in a classroom with 20 or 25 people each of you has a company each of you has a budget there the market split up into nine different sectors have different characteristics at least the game i played was like that and uh, you end up adjusting the uh, marketing budget and the production board budget and the sales budget in order to compete uh, against uh, the other players in the game and there's a picture of some of the output i don't know if i played this exact game uh, but the game was called compete Anyway, uh, this simulation was run once a week for 10, 10 weeks. I believe it was once a week. It might have been three times a week for 10 weeks. And at the end, um, one of the groups won. One of the groups uh, of the uh, 25 people were uh, playing the game. I thought I was pretty clever. I had a very brilliant partner from uh, Indonesia, I believe, who was a, really a top math whiz, and um, we wrote a Fortran program. Actually, I wrote it. She helped write, write the coding for the uh, basic uh, time series forecasting we did in that program. And we set up a matrix, and uh, we would input the data from all the other people and put it through, run it through this Fortran program, and it would split out a matrix, and we would just follow whatever the percentages of the budget were in each of the sectors we thought we were pretty good we won a lot of the times we came in second uh, but the point i'm trying to make was is or was at that time we, we we thought we would win because you know we were this was a relatively conservative math driven model but what actually happened is very similar to what elon musk and his people just did at the end, the winners were a couple of guys who were what you would call reckless. And what they did was they pushed to get their manufacturing costs down. They, they spent a lot on R&D. And they were all about price and market share. And they dramatically cut prices and much as tesla has done 
and uh, they were losing money and so on and so forth. In the end, they won the game. They beat out all the other 24, 25 teams that were playing this game. And the motto of that story was market share is king. And uh, Tesla's starting out, what did they say just recent with that last article, 18% market share. I do believe that this push is for market share. Of course, they want to use all their production capabilities. Uh, but um, in my basic understanding based on this simulation is that this, this is a winning strategy. And I do believe it's a, a push for market share. And I think some of at least some of Tesla's people had to play this game, in my opinion. <laughs> anyway, so um, that, I think, is the strategy. I think uh, these other entities talking about a loss in uh, market share for Tesla. Um, I don't think that's going to happen. Anyway, Major Tesla says Elon threw Tesla shareholders under the bus with the titter Twitter buy, I think it was definitely a rug pull. I think that uh, Elon Musk um, made the offer, then he tried to back out due to bots, and he is so right about bots. They are everywhere. They are on YouTube. They are on Reddit. Any negative news that you read about a company, you have to click on that source, and you have to look at it, and you will see the mo either a totally blank user profile or the phoniest possible um, profile. I do believe chatbots are also running a lot of responses in these rooms. And I think uh, Elon Musk was right about Twitter. However, I think the calculus that forced Elon Musk to do the rug pull on Twitter was um, he said he'd never back down from a case that he was right about or never pursue a case he was wrong about in court. Uh, my opinion of the Twitter deal is this. Um, they did an evaluation of the uh, pending deal, and I think they came to the conclusion that even with a lengthy court fight, Elon Musk would have ended up paying that price. He decided to cut his losses based on that analysis and uh, do the rug pull. Now, I may add, in the game I, left, I mentioned in the last sector, a big part of that push uh, to gain market share was increasing uh, the marketing budget. Combination of price cuts and increasing the marketing budget. And you can look at this Twitter buy as a massive marketing spend. I know Tesla says it doesn't use uh, marketing and doesn't use marketing. This, in my estimation, is a marketing effort on the part of Elon Musk and Tesla. At least it's transformed into that, in my opinion. Along with the price cuts, according to my experience, running a market simulation game, this should prove to increase his market share. It should allow him to dominate the market, actually, based on the other players. Now, uh, this next section... As it comes up here, I'm, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, you know, what they possibly could be doing. What, uh, in my mind, my analysis is uh, Elon Musk's reason for um, taking on Twitter. Um, again, Elon, with the, with the uh, rug pull, the price crash, the... Uh, uh, the idea that Twitter is like a plane that's about to crash, I think that's all very accurate. Um, however, Elon Musk, you know, Elon Musk has been basically in a CEO role for quite a number of years now, and he is one of the original innovators, although that leadership role is somewhat questioned with his original finance, uh, X.com and so forth. But Elon does have the chops to do this, especially at the executive management level. Uh, and I do believe he has enough uh, management capacity in place uh, in Tesla and his, especially the new Chinese operations guy they got in there. That Chinese Shanghai plant is really something. 
although hopefully not at risk. But in any case, I think uh, he has the chops to do it, and I do think that um, uh, the rest of the company is in good hands while he does it. So I don't think uh, that is necessarily a threat to the whole deal. Now, um, there are other factors, however. The... um, you know, the price that was paid for Twitter based on the um, bot activity. And I don't think anyone, uh, you know, I've done some recent looking into this bot activity. is all over the place. They've got a massive, you know, it's like a $1.2 billion. What is that? Uh, thir- $13 billion. Uh, anyway, there's about a billion dollar interest payment coming up on this. Now, they've got some sovereign wealth funds that uh, undoubtedly are going to support Elon Musk in this, and and I think they are going to uh, be able to pay um, this debt, uh, these interest payments on this purchase price. But, I mean, uh, I think it's great that, in a way, that this whole bot thing has come to light. It is absolutely being run by the business dark web, there are massive, massive fake social media and other commentaries that um, it's just breathtaking the amount of fake humans that are out there on the internet. Talk about AI taking over, it's already taken over. But uh, the point is there are risks associated with this. I think he can handle it. I want to go into next here what I think um, Elon Musk's ultimate goal is regarding uh, this purchase, and I, and I think it's this. I think it's the um, uh, Tesla phone. And these are some mock-ups of a phone. Tesla has uh, filed patents for a phone. I think that um, with... Uh, the launch of his uh, robo taxi, and again, we've got moving goalposts on the full self driving. However, um, I think uh, everybody's overlooking the fact that if Elon Musk wanted to operate within geofenced areas, uh, you know, hobbling full self driving for an automated taxi service within the city limits, something that could very easily be accomplished. As I said, Tesla has a number of patents filed for a phone. Um, here it is, the Model Pi. And again, those are all mock-ups. And there has been some fanboy stuff on what the um, operating system and so forth for this phone would be. And I think it's, in my mind, fairly obvious that um, th- once Twitter... Uh, is under control, and um, Elon Musk uh, takes over the software end, he's going to turn it into WeChat, which is uh, a Swiss Army knife of apps that they use extensively in China. Ride hailing, shopping, delivery, um, robo-taxi, um, you name it, uh, social media. Um, WeChat has a billion users. I believe it's the biggest message app uh, or app of its type, all-in-one, omnibus or whatever you want to call it, uh, app in the, on the planet. And I and Elon Musk is a fan of this program, and I think that he is going to use the uh, Twitter uh, infrastructure as a basis for the Pi operating system for the phone. And I do believe he may not have any outside apps on there, or he may put his own walled garden in for apps. But I think he is going to have that phone run, let's call it the Twitter operating system. And that is going to be, let's not call it a WeChat clone. It will be like WeChat. And it's going to be an integral part of owning a Tesla. And it's also going to be, they may actually 
sell a phone with each car, huh? How about that? Um, as an integral part of the vehicle, uh, but most certainly part of the uh, ride hailing program. Uh, I'm sure they're going to could use it. For example, let's just put up a competitor to Uber, okay? A uh, competitor to Hertz rental app. Uh, you could do anything you wanted to uh, with this hardware software combination. And I think, uh, including the chat, including the social media, I think you can see where I'm going with this. Now, Faraday Future has an option. Actually, the way their car is this, is defined, talking about getting rattled by bots and AI, Faraday Future is being mistreated by that infrastructure from the dark web, business dark web. But, for example, if you had this phone, the Pi phone from Tesla, when you got into your Tesla, whatever you were looking at on the screen on your phone, and then Faraday Future has this capability or is going to, uh, that would automatically transfer over to the screens in your vehicle. And whatever you were doing, uh, there it would be. And this kind of seamless integration of uh, a mobile phone into a car or, let's say, a robo-taxi that had screens in the back seat uh you know on the back of the headrest that would just pick up whatever you were looking at on your phone and so on and so forth you see here i certainly hope it does not come to that but if there's another no choice i will make an alternative phone i actually think this is elon musk's grand scheme of things i think this is perhaps not on the front burner but it is something that he's been thinking about all along and i think uh another one of his companies are also key to this and that is the Starlink uh, internet infrastructure um, so not only can um, Elon Musk have a phone uh, that's proprietary and an operating system that's proprietary and a system like that that's excuse me totally integrated into uh, his vehicle fleet and into full self-driving and by the way this would be a two-way system it would be collecting data and also providing services to users um, his Starlink uh, uh, program is something that we could have these receivers integrated into the cars the phone certainly could ex uh, access the system from the handset so you could see an entire walled garden and i do think that this is part of uh, tesla's uh, theory or uh, their credo of uh, making their own infrastructure and making their own parts and so forth so i think this is the ultimate plan but uh, i'm going to try to close this with just a bit more on the uh, tesla market share thing but that, those are my opinions so far. Let's get on to the next section. So this has been kind of the description that uh, business media has been showing on what's been happening lately at Tesla. Uh, and this is from Green Matters. <clears throat> Again, you can look this up, guys. This is recent press. Tesla cuts prices due to declining stocks and Elon Musk erratic behavior. I... Um, you know, these may be factors. I do think that um, the main factor here, in my opinion, is macroeconomics. And uh, again, I think this is a um, kind of a proven business strategy uh, to take market share. And uh, I think they're striking at some weak competition. I don't see any major competitors to Tesla especially if you include the charging network. So I think this is a, is a chance to take advantage of weakness in the competitor's market share, grab market share. And again, I think the only competitor, potential competitor to Tesla right now in the next four years, let's say, is the Lordstown Motors, MIH, Foxconn Consortium, which is... Uh, going to be going into production very shortly and I think they're going to have uh, the wherewithal to compete with Tesla and perhaps produce the 
the uh, robo taxi for Tesla, Tesla. We'll just have to see on that. Now, uh, I do believe I have a section coming up here um, involving um, an AI program. This is an AI program I use. Um, it's actually more focused on the Japanese stock market, but uh, it just shows a contrarian down here. Uh, and we can see this is up to the most current day. This is recorded on a Sunday right before. Uh, this is Sunday the 22nd. They're showing a down, uh, a down move with this AI program. And I think Tesla mostly moves down post earnings calls uh, no matter no matter what but this is just an idea of um, well, some some something that might be able to give an insight into the stock price but again this particular AI is uh, predicting uh, a contrary down and that was um, for the last five days so I think it was right to up until about now we'll see going forward what it says um, now this next uh, I have a I have a, a, another tool here and I find this AI program to be very interesting this guy's out of Japan this is a um, subscription model Tesla's cuts show Musk is not going to play nice as the EV layer goes on the offensive to spur demand Wedbush says I agree I think this is Dan Ives but I agree, and I think that, uh, you know, it may be a lot of things, okay? And there may be a lot of factors, but I do believe this is a push for market share. Uh, this is a time series forecast I did. Unfortunately, new program for me. Uh, but uh, this is based on volume. And at the end there, that's uh, a confidence range in the output. And you can see all three confidence levels show a spike in volume now that volume could be up volume or down volume but you can see the past spikes and this is predicting a spike nearly as high as there's been spikes in Tesla volume so there is that and um, these time series forecasts I find can be fairly reliable um, now this is another this is kind of an AI uh, technical analysis program that I use stock TA and it's a pretty basic program but I find it to be pretty useful um, if you don't want to go through all the charts yourself and uh, and uh, draw the lines and everything it incorporates a lot of uh, good models this is this is free you have to open an account on this but you can pause this and go through this um, there's your Tesla chart. It's looking at resistance there at uh, 232, I believe, and uh, the support is at 121. And um, again, this moves from day to day, uh, depending on the output. We've got an overall bearish technical signal, short term neutral, intermediate term neutral, and a long term very bearish on Tesla. Um, the resistance they have there cited is 232.71. So there's quite a lot of uh, 200 is a is a uh, and 121.93 support. 200 is a, a level that some other analysts have um, said uh, is a level Tesla has to reach for the stock to be healed. Um, I think. Um, Based on everything, and, and I do think that uh, Tesla is the apex predator in the BEV market. I think GM is, you know, just not being able to get the Lyric out, the problems with Ford production on the Lightning and the vehicle itself, you know, the GM Bolt, the Volkswagen ID bricking, uh, Lexus and... Uh, Rivian, I don't think, I think their vehicles are overly complex. I don't think they're going to survive. I think uh, I agree with Elon on that. So uh, if you throw in the charging network, which I think is major for Tesla, I really, and the operation of their vehicles, how they work, they actually work and constant uh, improvement of uh, Drucker quality improvement. 
I do think they're going to be the apex predator. I do think this move is going to result in gain market share, and there may be an intermediate dip in the price, but I, I do think Tesla is um, going to maintain the, the dominance in the market. Again, in my opinion, you know, the main competitor of Tesla hasn't started production yet, and that is Foxconn. And I do think that Lordstown Motors, the Lordstown Motors MIH Foxconn conglomerate is going to be the challenger of Tesla. And the only way to play that, by the way, is ride stock. That would be the listed, NASDAQ listed stock that's part of that uh, organization. Anyway, that's my two cents coming up on the earnings call for Tesla.